So John, two years since you were appointed under 21's assistant coach. How do you reflect on those last couple of years? Oh, look, it's been brilliant. Um, I mean, when you get to, for me, uh, to get the chance to work with Ireland at any level, it, it was always amazing for me. But then when you get the chance to work with a, a staff, a group of people, um, that you first of all that you know a little bit about, but then you get to know them much better over those two years. Um, it's been a brilliant experience and a huge learning curve for me in terms of uh, preparing, obviously for whether it be one game, two games, or three games, whatever whatever the camp might be. But um, that preparation and detail that's needed that goes into it with all the staff behind the scenes, I think that's been the real um, the real eye opener for me. You kind of as a player. You got the idea of kind of what went on, but obviously as the player you're fortunate, you just turned up and the staff were there and looked after you, brilliant. But now when you're on the other side of it and you realise the detail and the planning that goes into it, and obviously it was a tricky period in the sense of with COVID, different things like that, the extra preparation that was needed and the challenges that the, some of the staff had to face. Um, no, I have to say, look, it's, been, it's easy to say it now in that, in that sense, but the it shows going forward the kind of people that you'd like to work with in the future, wherever that may be in the sense of whatever environment you're in, you want to have, be surrounded by good people and fortunate that's what we have. You have an incredible amount of experience as a player at international level, you've touched on it there, but what have you kind of learned or the differences between as a player and as a coach at international level? Yeah, I think the big thing for me, Adam, I think would have to be it's just the preparation beforehand to make sure that the camp, the the games run smoothly. Um, so in the sense of you have the, the bigger group of staff and then the technical staff, If the, I'm sure you find it as well in the sense of the more you're prepared beforehand, the kind of smoother the camps go really. Um, and yeah, obviously there's going to be changes as we, we all know what happens, whether it be um, different things happen with injuries or something, something like that can happen in camp. And you have to react to it, but I think that's where the kind of composure of having that experience of dealing with certain situations uh, helps you helps you cope with that. And uh, having that support group of the of the staff around you, and having Jim as the the lead figure is has been excellent too. And have you a particular highlight from the last couple of years with the under 21s? One that stands out, and you go, yeah, that was great. That was a great moment. Ah, uh, look, it's. <laughs> That the one that have to be would be Sweden, Sweden at home for me. Um, just in the sense of I think for that group, obviously when we when we first got in, uh, when I got involved, say with the twenty ones with Jim and, and Rennie and Reg, um, you're coming in towards the end of a campaign, and obviously you're hoping to finish it as strongly as possible. But you're obviously we now this is our kind of full campaign ourselves. And um, we'd had some tough results, but that Sweden, Sweden at home game, the late, the late win just gave everyone a huge boost in the sense of we know we're putting in good work and the players are enjoying it and the staff, everyone's kind of, the, the, the feeling around the place, the vibe around the place is very good. So um, to get that late goal just made everyone, look, as always when you win a game late, it's, it's an amazing feeling, but it just gave everyone that extra boost to think that we can actually qualify and it put us in a great position and, and thankfully obviously we went on to, to double down on that win at home to, to go and win away in Sweden too so when you get that boost it gives everyone that extra bit of confidence and I thought you could see that out in Sweden too when we had to when we had to dig in and I think as well as that the group it was, it was funny I noticed it before we we met up for the Sweden and uh, the Sweden away game that uh, we had an under 20s friendly and uh, it was the night of the friendly when some of the lads that, that weren't obviously in the under-20 group but they were meeting up for the under-21s that they actually came to the under-20 game and just they could have been at home with their families if they wanted, they could have stayed with friends, whatever it was, but they came out to, to see the under-20s as well, but to see, their, to see their mates that maybe they played with too, to see how they were getting on, but to see that camaraderie in the group was a real eye-opener as well to know that there's a great connection in the group too and I think that's grown as well. With two big games in June, thousands of fans have already got their tickets. How big would it be for yourself, the staff, the players to have a packed out teller for those games on June 3rd and June 6th? Yeah, I think a packed out teller would it'll just make, we know what kind of atmosphere we've had there already. 
Um, and to have that again will be incredible because, to be fair, over in Bosnia, more so Montenegro, it was quite hostile and obviously they were potentially able to influence maybe some decisions as well and stuff like that. So if you can have that hostility, but also the support, they know the, the Irish fans travel in huge numbers around the world, but they get the chance, obviously, I don't think there'll be League of Ireland games as well that weekend um, for, for those two games. So to get that chance to, to come and see the future as well, because we've seen already how, how many under 21 lads are involved with Stephen and the seniors that are doing brilliant. And I'm sure there'll be plenty more from our group heading up to the seniors quite soon too. So to get the chance to see them in the flesh, bring the family as well, I think it'll be a great couple of days and I think the players will respond to it. And as always, like, like Jim says to the players before every game, to show the, f the fans and the people watching on the telly as well, the commitment, not only in your pride and your passion of playing for Ireland, but also in your ability to play properly, to play out, play out from the back, play through the lines, be real positive in your performances and show what a good uh, attribute you can be for Ireland in the future. Next year will be 25 years since you were part of the, the under-16s that won the European Championship. How fitting would it be if you were part of the group to take a first ever under 21s team to a European Championship? Oh, look, it would be amazing, Adam, um, to think, uh, not that you make me feel that bit older now or anything, but no, look, it, it was an amazing time for us. And we kind of, obviously with Brian and Noel, the, the, those teams, the, 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 we did incredibly well, obviously, and that, that bond still remains with, with th those groups and those players, those teams and staff. Um, so to think you have that chance to ignite that flame again for the country to, to qualify for a, for a major tournament uh, would, would be brilliant. But we know it's a, it's a good test, it's a good challenge for us. Fingers crossed we have the players fit and healthy that we know we can, uh, if we can have them all together for those. Because if we get the results in those two games, it kind of it leads up to the, the away game against Italy nicely. But um, if we can have that, to lead up to the anniversary of that 25 years later would be incredible and as I said the, the biggest thing is for the players to do themselves justice first and foremost and I think if they do that I think we can, we can get that anniversary to, to match hopefully 25 years later.